And hello, thank you for coming. My name is Joe So my name is Joe Bannon, and uh, this is Kimmy, who will translate for me today. Um, and I'm really happy to spend some time with local artists and people working in arts and disability this evening. Um, because I don't know you, and uh, I don't know much about the arts and disability sector here in Seoul, and you don't know me. I'd like to spend most of our limited time together in conversation um, so that we can share our kind of own experiences and can ask some specific questions. Um, but I'll just spend about 20 minutes talking about my work so you've got some idea of the work I do um, and then we'll open up to more of a conversation. So I'm an artist from Bristol, which is in the southwest of the UK. And for about the last 10 years, I've created quite a wide range of work that all falls under the category of live art or performance. From time to time, I work in a larger company of collaborators, but primarily, I'm a solo artist. And I also self-produce my own work, by which I mean I conceive of the new work myself, and I lead the creative team and other collaborators and it also means that I do a lot of the producing of my own work, so I do a lot of fundraising and publicity and the kind of logistics of drawing my work and getting it in front of audiences. So the big advantage of working as a solo artist for me is that I work for myself, which means I don't really have to work to anyone else's agenda. Um, but I guess the disadvantage is that it, it can get a bit lonely and um, no one's really there to share the work with you. And in the UK at least, the industry is often set up to support much larg larger companies and organisations. So I'm a bit of a lone wolf, but I guess after 10 years I must like it that way. I think I also work as a solo artist in part because my work is deeply personal and uses my own identity and autobiography as a starting point. I wonder sometimes if this is something more fundamental to do with being a disabled person and living in an identity and, a, and in a body which is less normal, less common, which is not the same as everyone else's. I think for me, this experience gives me an interest in the kind of singularity of each individual, how different we are from each other and maybe leads me to work on my own. But also, in direct contradiction to this, it also makes me want to work in theatre, which is an art form which, at its heart, is about a group of people getting together to share an experience. So, I identify as a visually disabled person with albinism. So, albinism is a genetic condition, which means I have little or no pigment and colouring in my hair, skin and eyes. Um, and that's how it affects my kind of uh, aesthetic, but it also affects the way my eyes work, so it leads to a lot of different eye conditions. Um, and I think my work often looks through this lens of albinism and my experience as a visually disabled person, because the recurring interests in my work lie in identity and the borders of the human body. I'm kind of interested in how our physical bodies experience the world around us and how our senses and this sensory experience can or cannot be conveyed between people. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two pieces of work that I've made. Um, one which is one of my earliest pieces of work and one which is much more recent. So, Exposure is one of my earliest works. I made it in 2010, and it's the performance that I'm presenting at Eon Gallery. And I'm only going to say a few things about it today, because um, some of you might still be coming to see it, and I don't want to spoil the surprise. Yeah. So, Exposure was the first explicitly autobiographical work that I'd made, and was directly informed by my relationship to my vision. It's an ode to the eye examination, and the real life experience and intimacy of getting my eyes tested was the beginning of the idea for this work. Um, it's a short, immersive and intimate performance for one audience member at a time. 
Although the performance exists mostly in the dark, there are moments of illumination where light is used to highlight certain aspects of the narrative. Light is so important in this work because it mirrors something I'm trying to communicate about how I see. Because of my albinism, my eyes are very oversensitive to light, and I was curious in this work to see if I could share this experience with the audience member through this contrast of dark and light. So in the performance, I use this kind of mechanism of photography, this sudden exposure of a camera flash to burn these kind of momentary images into the audience's vision. Exposure uses the material of light, darkness and brightness, revealing and exposing to question how we look, how we are looked at, and if we can ever really be seen. And Alba is the second work that I'll talk about. Um, it's kind of like a sister project or sequel to Exposure. So unlike Exposure, Alba is a staged work for a large audience. And it's also influenced by my experience as a person with albinism. The show uses an, this idea of blinding light, domestic objects, movement and sound to create a kind of visual poem or live painting. It also began with a fascination about how my mother told these mythic, mystical stories about my birth. So I was born on the day that the Catholic Pope, the head of the Catholic Church, came to my hometown of Coventry. The Pope hadn't visited the UK in over 400 years, and it was this particular Pope's first visit, and mine too. So I arrived home to a house full of about 60 Irish relatives who'd all flown over to the UK to wait for his arrival and my arrival. <laughs> and so from that moment on, my family decided to twin the unexpected arrival of me, this unusual white-haired child, with this significance of a visit from the Pope. In their eyes, I was a visitation, a miracle. It was a tall tale, a bit of make-believe, a family joke, but it was also an incredibly tender act of love on the part of my mum. To decide to see the world and the, un and the unexpected arrival of this unexpected child as a miracle. Um, I'm going to show you two short clips of that show. Um, it's going to be a, a little test for the translator because you'll hear my mum's voice and she has a very thick Irish accent. So I don't know how...
just to explain, my mum tells this story over and over and over again about the first time that she put water on my hair. And she tells it as if my hair really did disappear. I think she believes that it did. And I can see some logic. My hair is very fine, it's very pale. So like when you wet thin cotton, it might look like it disappears. But she kind of um, blurs the line between what she believes and kind of um, real faith, real belief in miracles. And then we'll just watch one more clip. So could we have the lights up again? She's telling a story um, of being out in the city centre of our hometown with me when I was about eight years old and a boy across the street at McDonald's shouting, look at that albino. And my response, which was to get really angry and run across the street towards him and to start chasing him. And she talks about... Um, that she was afraid for her, that she was running after me, trying to stop me, he was much older, um, and that I didn't catch him, but if I had a, that he ran for his life, and that if I'd caught him, I would have given him a good beating. <laughs> and in some way, I chose that um, story for the show because I think maybe it illustrates why she chose to create a kind of myth around me because there were other perceptions also that were much more negative, like that boy shouting in the street. Um, so I think she chose to create a kind of counter story, a counter narrative. And so what I try and do in the work, and maybe uh, in this clip, I think of the work as a duet with her. So she created one kind of mythic story out of very, um, humble information and in the work I try to take her stories and use very um, ordinary objects like a hairdryer to elevate this kind of image, to use a hairdryer to make the hair look like it's um, floating or flying. So I was kind of interested in taking her seriously and taking the ordinary and trying to <coughs> make it extraordinary. Alba explores the stories we tell of ourselves and the stories told about us. The myths we inherit and the ones we embody. The identities that we cannot shake off and so instead perform. So I think that's enough for me. Um, thank you for listening and thank you for translating. Um, but now I'd like...